Hey guys, welcome to our Imprint Sunday service at home. I hope you've had a lovely Christmas, spending time with your friends and family and eating good food. We're about to get into a time of praise and worship, so get ready. See you after. Kings and kings. 
Be 
all comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority. Jesus has given me. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I'm seated. In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all I hope you guys enjoyed the time of praise and worship Now we're going to go into a time of highlights Yo Devonte, what would you say Jesus has done for you this year? I think I'm just grateful for the spiritual growth that I've seen in my mum and other family members as well. So you always got to be grateful for spiritual growth. Um, but what do you think God has really been doing in our community this year? I feel like God has taken our community through a season of rebuilding, a season of new growth, and he's just taken out our old roots. And he's really just setting us up for the new year where he's going to just give us so much restoration and grace. So guys, we're now getting into a time where we're going to go through the highlights of our year. Um, and it's going to be presented by a brother, you know, Mr. OFP himself, Brother David. Welcome to Sunday service at home. God has been so faithful this year that we have a few people in our community that like to share their highlights of 2021. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Nina, who is going to share the highlights of 2021 and also share what they're thankful and grateful for this year. Um, so I'm really grateful that Jesus has given me the desire to serve him. Um, I kind of recognise that you don't just wake up one day and decide that you want to follow Jesus. He gives, he places the, um, the desire for him on your heart. Um, it says in Jeremiah 24, um, I will give them a heart that recognises me as Lord. So I'm just thankful that, um, that I want to wake up every day and praise him, that um, he's given me the joy to serve him and that he opens like he opens up his arms and like kind of embraces me. So yeah, I'm really, really grateful for that. My name is Adiri. Um, I'm on the worship team and I'm on Imprint Films um, as a writer. So um, yeah, I'm glad to be here. I think this year, I'm most thankful for Jesus for being faithful. Um, I saw myself go through a two year season and despite not seeing what I wanted, I still saw Jesus um, every single day, even the days where I thought he wasn't there. And um, to come out at the end of it, I genuinely am just grateful that I saw his faithfulness. I saw him sustain me. I saw him keep me. I saw him renew my strength. Um, and I saw him hold me when I needed to be held, when I didn't feel like I was worthy. He was there. He stepped in. And um, yeah, I'm just grateful for that. My name is Neto and my wife and I, we came to be part of Imprint this year. The Lord clearly showed us in a vision like we should come and ask Pastor Wolf to pray for us. And out of that prayer, a few weeks later, we understood that we should join and, and, and offer us helps to help. So here we are. The year of 2021, it's beyond words. So I would say this, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. That's a good representation of what our 2021 is, has been so far, yeah. because the, end, the year hasn't ended yet. Yeah. So what has been your highlight of from him for this year? Um, yeah, it's definitely been Cruz. Um, so I've been leading um, Angel Lane Cruz with Debbie and it's been like, yeah, it's basically the highlight of my week every week. Um, it's been such a great community. I feel a sense of belonging um, and we really do encourage each other and challenge each other. Um, and so, I've, yeah, it's just been such a great experience, especially um, 
the fact that leading cruise has made me like delve into my Bible more, um, really understand scripture and has really increased my faith. So yeah, it's been amazing. <laughs> my highlight from imprint this year would have to be the showcase. Mm. Um, obviously your boy was, you know, the lead. Um, and it really took me out of my comfort zone. I hadn't acted in since since secondary. Mm. Um, and to not only get a part of the whole showcase team but to be the lead as well to audition and get the lead it was an amazing feeling um, and it really just showed me how much work needed to be put in to you know to pursue this as a career but more so it gave me hope yeah. in my gifts yeah. I was very insecure about my gifts and I feel like the showcase just exposed everything yeah. and um, yeah I would love to do it again man honestly it was the greatest but I'm more so just thankful that people got to experience the gifts that I have and that I wasn't hiding them away. I feel like we all have talents, we have gifts and that is something that shouldn't be hid behind closed doors. It's something that people need to see. We have gifts so we can bless others. So it is. I have joined the worship team and I'm coming back into music. God spoke to me and then my wife we pray and stuff and Something happened and then a few weeks later I was at church. Pastor Wood was praying for us and, and he gave us a word about me going back to into music. Mm -hmm. And I applied to join the worship. I have passed in the audition. And it has been uh, a restoration of, I would say that, of the joy of being part of a worship team. This has been a great highlight. I could say that. There are, there is more, but I'll, 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 I'll stick yeah, with this one. Awesome. Awesome. So what do you sense God is doing in our community? Um, so when I was praying about this, I kind of sensed that God has already given us the gift of encouragement as a church. You know, we really um, lift each other up, um, celebrate each other. But I also kind of feel like he's going deeper into that in a sense that um, we come, we're coming together with diverse skill sets, um, backgrounds, and we're kind of all fitting together in, in a sense that we're celebrating our differences, the beauty of them, and almost as if like a painting um, where you have different colours that kind of complementing each other. Um, and I just really sense that God is kind of unifying our community in that sense. Yeah. Unity, definitely unity. I've learned so much from people that have come from different backgrounds from me. Um, not just like areas or country-wise, but life experiences. And I've been able to apply some of what they've learned and what they've gone through to my situations. And I found that I've come out great on the other side. So I feel like within our community, um, God is really encouraging people to tell their story, yeah. um, encouraging people to be bold enough to say, I've gone through this, or I've had to go through this, or I'm dealing with this. And I feel like that's encouraged me um, as well as others to truly speak up about some of the things we're going through, which I feel like is important. This community, this community. You know, in Isaiah, when he says, come and buy without money and without price. So now everyone who is thirst, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Imprint is that place where we can go and we have fresh water from God and we have fresh bread from God. We have food, we have drink, we can come and, and, and feed ourselves. We can come and see and what I, to the extent I have seen so far, God is building a generation here who will change the course of the gospel in this country and beyond. This is what I believe. Woo! Those highlights were amazing. It's great to see what God has done throughout the year. Now we're going to go into our sermon by our very own creative director, Brother Bernard. Welcome to Sunday service at home. Uh, my name is Bernard. I'm the creative director at Imprint Church. Um, and I lead the amazing creative team. And behind me, we have the amazing tech team as well, helping me to deliver this sermon. Um, I'm so glad you could join me today on this Boxing Day. I hope you enjoyed Christmas, you know, had a great time with your family. 
um, had some good food as well, and actually got to celebrate the birth of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Um, and I guess December is an interesting month um, in our calendar because it's a month filled with um, celebration, reflection, as we draw it to the end of the, year, of the month. Um, and from the context of our church, December is a month where we celebrate our Saviour Jesus um, and actually realise how much of a world-changing moment it was uh, for the course of our lives. And I guess from a cultural context in the UK, December, we actually feel the pressure of it from November, to be honest. Um, it's when we start to see different companies setting up their adverts for Christmas sales, um, Boxing Day sales, always, <laughs> always a mess. Um, and we begin to see the streets of London sort of dressed up in these extravagant decorations and lights. Our favourite coffee shop, I can't name them, but you know which one it is, um, begins to release their festive menus. Um, we start receiving uh, messages from different sort of events, you know, inviting us to their events. Um, and also we get reminders about our secret centres. Have you guys done your secret centre? Cool. You done it? All right, cool. All right, sweet. All right. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so you got this good stuff, but then on the other side, we might feel the sense of apprehension and also strain, um, whether it might be a financial strain, um, our relationships, our social battery due to the amount of endless events taking place. And for some of us in this current season, there's actually no sort of scope for any joy or any celebration. And in this time, it's so important to fix our eyes on Jesus. And today I'll be speaking on the principle that aids us in sort of finding this renewed sense of joy and gives us this daily opportunity to stretch our faith in Jesus. And this tool is known as daily gratitude. And that's today's um, title sermon. So before we begin, let's pray. So in Jesus' name, um, Father, thank you for this, this word that I'm about to deliver. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of gratitude. And we're able to, to be grateful for the things because of you, Lord. From you, Lord, all things come and we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything. For the things that we may deem as small, for the, the things that are absolutely life-changing. And we say thank you, Jesus, for every single thing. Because without you, we are nothing. And I pray that this word will really just honour you and just point everyone back to you, Jesus. As a true reason for our gratitude and true reason for our hope. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so daily gratitude, what does this mean? So according to Google, the definition of gratitude is this, the quality of being thankful, the readiness to show appreciation for, and to return kindness. So from this definition, it breaks down to three different points. So number one, gratitude extends beyond thankfulness. So thankfulness in definition is basically acknowledging a benefit received. So. I don't know, what, what blessings, I'm, I'm going to ask the people that are behind the camera, what blessings have you received from God? Let's name, let's name a few. Life. Life. Health. Health. Joy. Joy. Friends. Love. Love. Peace. Peace. Love that. And those, those are just a few to mention. So that's, that's, that's what thankfulness is. Um, gratitude. Gratitude um, also is conscious of the benefit received, extending a deep sense of appreciation. And this looks like what we do at church every Sunday. Worship can look like prayer, can look like giving, and so many other ways. Um, and one way um, of worship, which is a clear act of gratitude, is actually found in Romans 12, verse 1, which reads, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God, and because of all he has done for you, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. So that's number two. And number three is gratitude causes us to return kindness. And we see this principle throughout, throughout scripture. And more specifically, uh, we read this in John um, chapter 13 from verse 34, which reads, So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should show love to each other. So, when we sort of break down this scripture and we read this through the lens of gratitude, we see this, number one, the benefit received is the unconditional love of God, which never fails. Number two, how do we show appreciation? This could be through worship, a song that lifts up the name of Jesus. And how do we return this kindness? 
showing love to each other. So I hope that makes sense. So therefore, I guess a more biblical definition of gratitude could be the quality of being thankful to God, producing the readiness to show appreciation, praise and worship for his providence and to extend kindness and love to God and people. And gratitude is difficult. It's something that has to be cultivated daily. Um, Because we are faced with consequences, we're faced with different situations every single day, different hardships every single day. And it's not easy to have gratitude in this life, you know, it's, it's very tough. And what I love about gratitude is that it actually opens up your mind to the beauty of God, the wonders of God, the blessings from God. And I think one struggle that we find in this generation today is just the fast pace of life. Um, in our context, obviously living in London, um, I've always used this example of sometimes you just be traveling underground and everyone's running somewhere or always in a rush or something, but gratitude exists in a place where, it's, where things have been slowed down, where you actually get to focus. Think about it this way. If you don't take the time to sit down and actually reflect, how can you actually realise what God has done for you? There's so much he has, but so often we tend to forget. And daily gratitude is thanksgiving with motion. It calls us to actively extend and return that which God has blessed us with to others. And it creates a space, of, it creates a space and a mindset for us to operate in a place of contentment and appreciation. And I guess in, in Psalm 23, it reminds us that the Lord is our shepherd, but I have all that I need. And during this Christmas period, I listened to uh, Maverick City's new album. Um, yeah, you can find it on Spotify or something. <laughs> uh, and there's a song called Gratitude. Um, I was going to read a particular lyric um, that stood out to me. Um, so basically, this woman was speaking um, sort of as the song sort of broke down um, into a little like, sort, of, sort of spontaneous worship. And the woman said this. Several years ago, they did a neuroscience study that proved that gratitude and anxiety cannot exist in the brain at the same time. So when I heard this, I was like, like this, is, this is quite powerful, you know. It cannot exist in the same time in your mind. So I'll repeat again. Several years ago, they did a neuroscience study that proved that gratitude and anxiety cannot exist in the brain at the same time. And I actually decided to do some research as a result of this from my you know, university skills. Harvard referencing and that. Um, and funny enough, this was actually from Harvard. It says this, in positive psychology research, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive, more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity and build strong relationships. Gratitude is a way for people to appreciate what they have instead of always reaching for something new in the hopes it will make them happier or thinking they, can, they can't feel satisfied until every physical and material need is met. Gratitude helps people refocus on what they have instead of what they lack. And although it may feel contrived, which means far-fetched at first, this mental state grows stronger with use and practice. And I just find it so interesting that this is coming from a resource that's not even the Bible, but still they acknowledge, they acknowledge this principle in motion. Now, as followers of Christ, when they use that term that, you know, um, this gratitude seems sort of far-fetched, as followers of Christ, we understand this, that this is not far-fetched, but this is faith. We believe in what we can't even see, and we trust and have the confidence in God. And this is why we are called daily to renew our minds and align our vision to this truth and reality of God's daily provision in our lives. And that leads us to a place of active and daily gratitude. And again, we see this in Romans 12, 2, which says, don't copy the behaviour and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So now that I've defined gratitude, um, we're going to go into some godly principles and the fruit of practising daily gratitude in our lives through the scriptures. So if you can turn with me to Luke Chapter 17, from verse 11 to 19. <clears throat> and in context, in this scenario, um, Jesus has basically healed 10 men with leprosy. Um, this is not normal. This is incredible. Um, so yeah, I'll read. And it should be on the screen somewhere. 
So, um, verse 11. As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered the village there, ten men with leprosy stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to this man, or said to the man, Stand up and go, your faith has healed you. This, this story in itself has so many lessons and principles to see. I think even starting from verse 13, these men actually had knowledge of Jesus. They had knowledge that he was, for some people, they thought he was a prophet. Others believed that he was God. And they actually understood this, and that's why they called out to Jesus in verse 13, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And going on from that, Jesus actually sparks their faith further and says to basically present their bodies to the priests to declare that they were clean. And in this, in this day and age, at, at that time anyway, going to the priest to declare yourself clean was definitely an act of faith because at, when Jesus had said that, the leprosy was still there. <laughs> it was still there, but still yet they had that faith to go. And actually, as a result of that faith, you know, these men were healed. And it, it's interesting because later on we see that you no, know, Jesus asked, where are the other nine? And it, it's so interesting because I guess in our, in our context sometimes these days, and I guess throughout history, we've seen many times where people have had this knowledge of Jesus, but do we actually acknowledge the presence of Jesus in our lives? We have the knowledge that he can heal, he can do this, he can do that, but do we acknowledge and actually cherish him, actually celebrate him? Do we praise him? Are we like the other nine that we get healed and oh, we move on with our life and forget about what God has just done. These guys got healed from leprosy. Leprosy. That is, this is a lifelong sort of disease. And still yet, they didn't return back to give praise. And I can say this right now, but I've been like those other nine before as well. I'm sure many of us can relate as well. And one thing I love about gratitude and, you know, just showing appreciation for God is that it allows us to see the character of God much more deeper. We understand that through this act, we see God's goodness, we see his kindness, we see his mercy to us. And encounters with Jesus always result in gratitude, always. Always will result in gratitude. And now going back to the definition that I was on, or speaking on earlier about gratitude, we can break it down into the three points again. So what was the benefit received? So it was the healing from leprosy. And how was this benefit received and appreciated through worship and thanksgiving as the man came down and praised Jesus? And how do we return this kindness, showing appreciation and honor to God, acknowledging that he's the giver of the blessing? And we don't know what happens next in this story, but I reckon it's similar to the Samaritan woman she actually went out to her town and spread the good news of Jesus and actually spread that, look, this man heals, he is God. And imagine what, what gratitude can do for us, what it can do for other people. As this man expressed his gratitude, his faith was strengthened. And I just want to encourage you guys and remind you guys again that in gratitude, it gives our faith a chance to grow again. How many times have we missed opportunities to actually see the goodness of God, see the character of God? There's too many times where God has been so, like, he didn't have to heal me, he wouldn't have to bless me, but he did out of his mercy. And actually in that time of gratitude, I got to know more about his, his character, more of who he is. And I think it's such a beautiful way to actually develop a relationship with Christ. It creates an opportunity to draw closer to the heart of God. And the foreigner displayed sort of a childlike faith, a joy that saw him extend his gratitude back to Jesus. And childlike faith, Jesus speaks about it so many times in the word. 
it allows us to be actively in the place of gratitude. When you see a child and you give them a little toy or something, for, I don't know, maybe yesterday for Christmas, you saw your niece or nephew, your cousin, your sister, I don't know, your brother, they got a, a toy and then you just saw them, their face light up. And sometimes that's how Jesus wants to see us. He wants to see us actually celebrate and actually honour all these gifts that he has given to us. Everything that we have is a gift. Everything. There's not one thing that we have on this earth that's not a gift. From literally the seat that I'm sitting in right now, to the warmth of this church right now, to the, my friends behind me, to everything, that is a gift from God. Everything's a gift from God. Don't miss that moment to know more of Jesus through those times of gratitude. And again, reflecting on sort of gratitude in my life, I remember when I was praying about what to, to sort of speak about, and God said gratitude, I was like, oh, I can't lie, I've not really been grateful for the past few months. I think things have been hard. But I think, yes, I think it's those ones where God reminded me of this. Like, have, you, have I become too like, familiar with his supernatural works? Have I relegated God to a sense of normality? Have we relegated God to a sense of normality? Do we see things and think, oh, yeah, normal is meant to happen? It's just meant to, well, I'm just meant to wake up today. I'm just meant to have food on the table. I'm just meant to have a job. Do we see things as just things that we should, we, we deserve, we must have? No, these are all gifts from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. And I guess um, for me, I had to sort of repent. And by repent, I mean this, this repentance in its term means to turn, turn away. I had to turn away from this mindset of ingratitude. And Romans 1, um, verse 18 to 23, um, gives us great insight into the root of ingratitude and the fruit that's birthed from this mindset. And it reads, But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. And just to uh, come in here, wickedness um, is basically refused to acknowledge that God is the creator and provider of all things. And we actually suppress that truth and actually try and, I don't know, cover up with something else that God has created. Um, and yeah, I'll, read, I'll continue reading them. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. And just to come in again, I remember when I was at university, I used to walk through the park, look at the sky and the clouds, and I'd be so gassed. And by gassed, I mean like amazed and like surprised. I used to look at the clouds and be like, so you're telling me there, there's clouds chilling in the skies? just floating like that. That's incredible, you know. It's actually crazy. We, we actually think about it. There's clouds. In, like, the clouds are not normal, you know. <laughs> Guys, we're actually, we're not even, I don't think we understand how much we relegate things to normality. The things of God are not normal. They're supernatural. Anyway, I'll continue. Um, through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And again, let's pause. How often do we acknowledge God, his goodness and beauty? In this world, we have so many distractions um, and naturally we forget to acknowledge the little details in our lives. And again, I want to encourage you, like, do you take time to sort of ponder, think about you know, all the things that God has created, visible or invisible. Now continue. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshipping the glorious ever-living God, they worshipped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. Jesus deserves all the praise, all the honour, all the glory. Like, we don't even exist without his presence. I remember, um, to be honest, it happens pretty much every single award show where a Christian wins an award and they want to praise God. And then somehow people will sort of on social media will you know, message them and say, oh, why are you giving this? Why are you praising this God? You, you worked hard for this. You worked hard for this. Like, stop 
giving praise to this God. And it's just so interesting how people get so worked up about, you know, not about giving praise to God. And it, again, it reminds me of that thing about, you know, and they begin thinking up their foolish ideas of what God was like. And as a result, their, their minds become dark and confused. There's no way you can live on this earth and see its perfect nature. Like, I don't do science like that, but from what I know, we're living beings, with very like, intelligent minds, creating very amazing stuff right now. And there's no way a Big Bang this happens <laughs> and this became possible. I just cannot fathom it. I cannot fathom it. I've seen too much in my lifetime. I'm still young to, not say, to say that God is not real. It, it's, I can't even fathom it. Just think about it. Everything that we have comes from God. Everything. Like, who gave life to this person who won the award? Who, you know, gave the, um, their parents, their guardians, their ability to look after them? To give them the sort of food, the clothes, the shelter to be, to be in? He gave us the health to achieve all these things. It was Jesus. It was God. And just um, as I'm coming close to the end of this, I just want to share a little testimony um, that... I haven't really shared as much and uh, I probably feel convicted. So I'm going to share it now. Um, so, um, f- ooh, three years ago, it's only three years ago. When did I graduate? 20, like four years ago, five? Well, it's been a while. Four, three. Apparently it's three. <laughs> Who knows? But I studied accounting and finance. Um, and whilst I was studying accounting and finance, um, I picked up design. And the way I picked up design was actually so random. Um, I think one of my friends asked me to create a logo for them, and I, I, I created it. And then um, my, you know, my, my missus over there, shout out, um, she basically encouraged me to sort of um, do, like, so yeah, like actually like really push on with this design thing because there was a little gift there. And God's, God has shown me that since I was a kid. Literally, I remember um, I'd be in maths and I'd be scribbling, I'd be drawing stuff. Um, I'm, I'm good at maths, you know, I'm good at maths, but the creative skill, that's something that God has always spoken to me about. Um, and actually, as a result of me picking up design, I actually started up an um, events company where I did like, um, events around London, spreading positivity, um, spreading Jesus. <laughs> and funny enough, um, when I graduated, um, I actually stayed in... Um, my role. Um, so I was in two finance roles um, at creative companies, funny enough. But again, God was, God was continuing to remind me of you know, this creative gift that I've got. And I think oftentimes I kind of su- suppressed it because I just didn't think it was possible. You can't study a degree, especially when they're telling you, you must have a degree in this, you must have a degree in that. You can't study a degree and sort of get a job in these industries. I didn't think it would be possible. And I'm telling you, I felt so low, so low. It, it, it's so low that it's funny, if that makes sense. Like, you know when you reflect on just sort of sad situations, but it's funny. Like, I'm, <laughs> I remember I went, um, I went on the phone to my friends like pretty much every lunchtime, no joke. I need to leave. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, I need to leave. I need to leave. Like, I was just frustrated, you know. I was like, oh, I need to leave, I need to leave. I was low, like, low. And in this time, God just led me to a place of prayer and actually just study um, where I'm but... God showed me, um, I was reading um, a scripture in the Old Testament um, where a king was instructed by a prophet to sh- um, strike the ground um, so that he could have overwhelming victory. But I think he struck it only three times, I think. Um, and because he did it um, sort of that a limited amount of times, he didn't have that overwhelming victory. That's what God was reminding me. So literally in that time, from what God was saying to me, that was regarding sort of my job applications and actually just actually pursuing this career. And I applied for so many jobs in the creative industry. I was working in finance. And then 
literally out of nowhere, I get an email um, where I'm at now. And literally the, the interview process, like shout out to my manager and shout out to the people that interviewed me, but like it was so smooth and so great. And even as I'm, what I'm doing here, guys, is reflecting on God's goodness. And again, when I'm reflecting it, you can see even the gratitude in my face right now because I'm actually realising that I was in the dumps. <laughs> I was in the dumps. <laughs> like, I literally felt so low. But God lifted me up. I can't, it's, not, it's not me. It's not me. It's Jesus. It's not me. And today, like, I sit here um, literally one year into... Um, my role, um, and I'm a designer, like, full-time. I'm in the creative industry. And that's, that's all Jesus. It's not me. I don't know how I'm there. I'll be honest. But it's Jesus. It's all him. And, yeah, even First Corinthians, you know, um, number, um, what's the number one? Chapter 1, uh, verse 31 says, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. Um, and, yeah, I can only boast about the Lord because it's only him. It's not me. Trust me, it's not me. And I just want to sort of encourage you, um, what is your story of gratitude? What is that story? And we have so many stories. We have daily stories. What is that daily story that you can look back and say, God, thank you. Thank you. And out of that, out of that gratitude, because gratitude doesn't stop at this acknowledging. It stops. It actually continues at returning that kindness. So me sharing this testimony is going to sort of encourage your faith. Um, even out of that experience, I actually want to help other people to get into the industry, other people to grow in that industry. I want to, like, at least I love helping people to grow um, in the, whatever they do with my gifts. So, yeah, like, really acknowledge God's, but also return that kindness, show that love that Jesus says that we should continuously show to our neighbours. And just to wrap up um, some practicalities, um, gratitude, like I said, doesn't come naturally. It must be cultivated. Um, and again, let's make this sort of daily act of thanksgiving. And we can do this through our prayers. When I pray, I always start off with thanks. And it, it might sound like, oh, but even if it's like, thank you God for opening my eyes, thank you God for this food, thank you God for this, thank you. it's not small stuff. It's not small stuff. Let's, let's really be thankful in, in, our, in our prayer and our thanksgiving. Um, it might be journaling for you, it might be voice noting, might be reflection, worship, praise, and so much more. Um, and again, share your testimonies. In the chat right now, um, share your testimonies. Acknowledge God in your life. Like, what is your story of gratitude? What are you thankful for um, today, yesterday, this year? What are you thankful for? And our actions really do show our gratitude. Our actions show that. I think sometimes when I feel low or moody, I need to reflect on God's goodness and that lifts me back up because I know that never ends. That's one thing in this world that I know that will always remain the same is Jesus, his character, his goodness. Nothing else can change that. And again, um, yeah, gratitude will ground us in turbulent terms. Um, it gives us the resilience to maintain our joy and our peace. And when we acknowledge Jesus in all our ways, he'll preserve our minds and keep us moving daily. And even in the most mundane days, God is still present. His mercy is still present. His grace is still present. Miracles are still present. And just to wrap up, the reason why we do this, the reason why we come to church, the reason why you know, I can speak with so much joy and gladness is because of Jesus. And the greatest gift that we've ever received is Jesus and that salvation that he, he, he died for us. That, that is the greatest gift. And that's something that whether you feel like you can't be grateful about anything, there's always going to be one thing, and that is salvation. Guaranteed that you will always be grateful for. Slow down taking that gift, taking that freedom that we have in Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus today, um, I just want to invite you to his kingdom. Um, and he wants to give you that free gift of salvation. And trust me, it's the best decision you can ever make. Um, in Romans 10, um, verse 9 to 11, it reads this. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it's by, by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. 
So again, going back to the definition of gratitude, what is the benefit received? The gift, the gift of salvation. And how do we show this appreciation through your repentance and belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord, acknowledging our, our sinful nature and trusting Jesus with our life and following the leading of his Holy Spirit when we receive and accept him into our hearts? And how do we return this kindness again by living as a living sacrifice? Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to pray for two groups of people. Um, firstly, those who have just welcomed Jesus into their lives. And secondly, those who want to practice daily gratitude and grow in their faith and relationship with Jesus. So yeah. So the first group, um, yeah, in Jesus' name, uh, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for these people that decided to enter into your kingdom. I pray, Lord, from this day forward, Lord, that they will just rely on you for their strength, for the grace for their day, that, Father, they will find light in your ways, in the path that you have set before us, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, that in this time you will renew their minds and that you will give them the strength that they need to walk with you, to follow you, Jesus. I pray that as they make decisions today, that they will find people that can support them in this journey, that can lift them up. And as a result, Lord, daily gratitude will be their portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And secondly, for the people that want to practice daily gratitude and grow in faith and, um, and relationship with Jesus like, even more, um, Lord Jesus, I just pray that you will just give us the grace and the strength to do this, that there will be constant reminders that you give us Holy Spirit just to be grateful, just to be thankful in all that we do. Give us the strength, give us the encouragement, the reminder to be thankful in all that we do. And I pray that as a result of our gratitude, that we'll grow in understanding of your character and your, your being. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So yeah, to end, um, Psalm 100, which is a psalm of thanksgiving, and it reads this, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, sing with joy. I acknowledge the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. What is your story of gratitude? Enjoy the rest of the year, and I'll see you in 2022. Peace.
triumph over Thank you for that sermon and burns. It really allows me to have a heart of gratitude and just be thankful for what God has done for me this year. Also, that worship was amazing. I hope you guys are blessed. We're now going to conclude our service with a few announcements, but make sure to sign up for our Sunday service next week and for our New Year's Eve service as well. We want to see you there at St. John's Church. Stay tuned for the Alpha video. You know that feeling. When you've got deadlines due but can't shake the mood of Questioning the deeper meaning of this life you're rushing through Confused We live in a world that's lacking patience While we fall deeper into cycles of notification after notification And argue in our minds like inner altercations About how we should feel more at ease about this life we're racing Or if we felt complacent And the tides keep changing and the bridges of understanding we built tremble under the questions of our very existence and below the surface, beliefs are formed though doubts also rise about the importance of faith in these often unfaithful times and the need for direction when our spirits feel blind look around and you'll see the signs but it's often easy to feel like they don't apply like we've strayed too far from the path to be let back inside but don't hide you'll soon see that the bigger questions of life have been asked by many before and that all along you had an invitation to find out more. The journey begins now. Step aboard and let your mind run free to encounter truth, to explore understanding of what this life really means. Because your life really means something and your questions are valid. And the walk towards clarity comes with facing our reality and grasping the realization that what we can comprehend is limited. But in this we can still find freedom. We can still find hope. We can still find love. We can find common unity and peace. And most importantly, we can find God at the heart of it and feel his heartbeat and the warmth of his smile when he lets us know that everything is going to work out. Just keep going. And as the weight lifts from our shoulders, we become bolder and remember that life is worth living and that love is worth giving and that we're not doing this life alone. Sometimes a change of perception can unlock our soul's wings of expression and refocus our gaze to look upon the Saviour and understand the sacrifice He gave 
that in this life, we have a second chance to try again. Hope is not too far away, you don't have to stop reaching. Discover Alpha, explore life, faith and meaning. So I attended Alpha last year. I found that it was a great space for people from different backgrounds and um, a great place for people to meet and discuss topics that are just on their mind surrounding Christianity. Something I found very, very um, useful was the breakout rooms that we had where we discussed in smaller groups uh, those difficult topics or just any topics uh, surrounding Christianity. I would definitely recommend that anybody sign up to Alpha, regardless of what you believe or don't believe. I think it's um, an amazing place. I met some fantastic people and had some discussions that kind of stayed with me and got me really thinking about um, my life on this earth. Hi, I'm Bamade. I was a team member at Alpha last year. My highlight was we had one session and everyone that I was leading just led the session themselves. They didn't require any prompts or me to fill in. They were just really enjoying the conversation amongst themselves. I signed up because I think it's really great to help people figure out more about the Christian faith, whether they're new Christians or people just trying to figure out if they even want to be Christian. So why should other people sign up for the People should sign up because it's really fun and the video is a really amazing way to break down the Christian faith and the big questions in a really digestible way. Hi, my name is Zach and I'm a member here at Imprint and I was a part of Alpha last year. What was your highlight last year? One of my highlights was just getting to know new people. It was a highlight of practicing my leadership skills and really learning of how to be myself around new people as well and getting some answers to some questions that I'd asked for a long while. And why did you sign up to be a team? Honestly speaking, I don't know. I don't recall doing it, <laughs> but I'm so glad I did. Um, it really stretched me. It stretched me in terms of breaking the ice with some absolute strangers that I'd never met before. Um, and especially in a setting like Alpha, it's really a chance to get to know new people and really see and find out some new perspectives of life and it's really taught me some, some stuff that I carry to this day. And why would you encourage other people to It's unique. Alpha is so unique. When I first heard of it, I thought this is interesting, but it's even better than it sounds. It's a chance to speak and have really thought-provoking conversations. Some of the questions I still ask myself to this day. Um, and yeah, it's amazing. We believe the Christian life is a partnership between God and the Christian family, the church. God is the source of all things, including our money, and we give back to him in the form of tithes and offerings. This enables the church to undertake the work to which God has called us, extending the kingdom and giving to his name. You can give by a bank transfer or at weareimprint.org slash give. changed and I've moved on